The city's been quiet lately. Maybe my luck's finally changing. Ahoy ho YouTube, my name is Brandon and I am the host of TYT Gaming or TBS if you watch my personal channel. And this is the 7th edition of Throwback Thursday where I take you on a nostalgia trip of my personal game collection and give a small retrospective look at a game. If you have any suggestions for a future Throwback Thursday, my Twitter and channel are in the description below. You can reach me there. For those who have been following the series, last week I reviewed Spider-Man the Movie which came out in 2002. In the very first edition of Throwback Thursday, I did Spider-Man 2000. Well, with the release of The Amazing Spider-Man, I thought it's great to see where the roots of the franchise, at least the video game franchise, came from with Spider-Man 2, which was released in 2004 for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. Off the bat, what's different about this Spider-Man game compared to the others I've reviewed is the ability to fight crime on a street level. From his origins, Spider-Man has always been a street level superhero. He doesn't really do indoor environments or corridors too well, and he doesn't really go and fight into space like Superman. Staying true to the comics, we finally get the ability to touch the streets, swing around New York City, and fight crime like we always wanted to. Instantly, no matter what, people drew comparisons to what I like to call the Grand Theft Auto effect. Because Grand Theft Auto pretty much popularized open world gameplay at the time, in 2004, all you heard was Grand Theft Auto meets Spider-Man. And I never really believed that claim, but I'll let you be the judge of that. I always try to put a disclaimer when it comes to graphics because as the game gets older, you can lower your expectations for graphical masterpieces. But even in 2004, this game was considered poor in the graphics department. A lot of people felt that there was a degree of trade-off for open world features versus graphics. Sort of like how we forgive Grand Theft Auto because the technology is so vast for open world gameplay, you can kind of forgive the graphical limitations that come with having that huge, vast environment. But even back then, the character models just seemed flat and poorly done. Outside the main characters you really care about, like Spider-Man, Rhino, Doc Ock, etc., everyone just looks terribly done. Pedestrians, cops, the nerd that is Peter Parker looks incredibly blocky, like he has an old school Xbox in his jacket with the original controller. And the indoor environments look just as bad, everything just feels flat, nothing pops out or sticks at you. This may just be the Treyarch effect, as we know Treyarch is terrible when it comes to graphics, but while we're on the topic of production values, the voice acting was just outright poor. I, I just heard gunshots! Come out with your hands up! Hey, Glenn! Spidey, I just, um, saw, uh, uh I, I can't do it. I'm sorry, Spidey! <laughs> I got a bunch of pizzas to deliver and you're late. Always, you are late. Oh, no, well, now I you have to hurry. Know. Get going. No problem. You can count on me. The one saving grace when it came to the voice acting was Bruce Campbell, who does the tutorial and a few other things in this game. But the voiceovers in this game don't help convey or deliver the story. Having said that, let's focus on the story for a minute. Because this is a movie licensed game, the story is pretty much laid out like I said in my review last week. All they had to do was follow the movie. There's very, very little deviation from the fundamental story. Yes, you're fighting Doc Ock because some crazy accident occurred, but the journey to get there is much different and frankly, more dull. This game introduces characters who didn't really appear in the film, such as Rhino, Black Cat, Shocker, and even Mysterio. In fact, a bulk of this game actually features Mysterio, who's a rather comedic villain and acts as filler for the main plot villain, which is Dr. Octopus. I did enjoy the creative license, but I felt like they could have done more. The entire Spider-Man mythology is based on a strong story and backstory, and for the most part, this game isn't really trying to tell you a story. It feels shallow. I said in another Spider-Man related video that I think they should do weekly villains doing crime. Just like in the comics where Shocker seems to break out of prison every week and rob a bank, why can't we include that in this game? Instead of generic thugs, give me a super villain and maybe three to four variations of his crime. Rotate the villains who escape. Hell, maybe introduce a sinister six or something. I really felt an idea like that would have taken away a lot of the tedious task or repetitious task I felt during this game. As for the game itself, swinging through New York City is an amazing experience. The sense of height or speed that Spider-Man travels at makes this the most authentic Spider-Man controls ever. But I mentioned shallow earlier. I think if you've broken every part of this game down, 
you realize there's this weird emptiness to the world. The collectibles, for example, added a few hours of gameplay, but the rewards were not worth it at all. It just feels tacked on. Overall, I think this game was rushed to meet the release date of the movie. There's an amazing game here, I think. And of course, it's unfair to compare this to an Arkham City, which I feel is one of the best games of all time. But even the combat is simplistic and can act as a button mash fest. I keep saying that I feel like this game is shell, because I think that's the best way to describe it. The repetitive side missions, even after you beat the game, are just tedious and boring. And I think this aspect gets amplified by the lack of music or dead spots that occur throughout the game. For example... Every week I try to give you guys a personal story about my relationship with the game, and after sinking 30 hours plus in this game when it first came out, the only thing I can remember is the instance where you fight Mysterio in a supermarket and defeat him in literally one punch. This actually might be one of my favorite moments in video game history, just because I think it was an amazing comedic setup. And of course, you guys don't need a recommendation this week because the Amazing Spider movie just came out, so go check it out if you want, I know I'll have to check it out one day. Put in your comments below everyone, what did you think about Spider-Man meets Grand Theft Auto? And if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, it would help more people see the series. And as always everyone, you're watching TYT Gaming, or TBS, hosted by Brandon. <laughs>